Welcome back. This is Bob, uh, better known as BAR549 from DoTalk.com, one of the best sites on the internet. In fact, it is the best site on the internet for Skidoo information. So, um, got a little help today. I uh, get a little frustrated. The uh, camera is giving me fits. So, got a little help, and hopefully, we can get through this. So, all right, I've saved some time. I've assembled part of this clutch, the E Drive 2. This is episode 2. Uh, episode one, uh, we disassembled it and did some measurements. I did clean it up uh, to save some time and put some of it together to save time also because there's no sense in me sitting here putting this thing all together and uh, having you guys watch that uh, because you'll get the gist of it. So anyhow, we cleaned it up. So just another thing, a shout out to Chris at CNT Power Sports. He, uh, he, uh, I bought my tools from him. And uh, he's a great guy to deal with, and all the tools that I'm using, special clutch tools, uh, I've gotten from him. So give him a shout. He'll take good care of you. Great customer service. And that. So I've also got, uh, you want to get a pad and paper and pencil uh, to write down some spring numbers and some specs that we'll go over. So, okay. Now I did clean this up. Now, uh, as you can see on here, I'm going to have my uh, assistant zero in on this all right and while she's doing that I'm going to talk to you about this and uh, right here you can see that it's got all it's cleaned up it's got some nice cross hatch pattern on it and that and what I've done to do that is is I use brake clean I wipe it as clean as I can get it first to get everything off I can and then I spray brake clean on it, keep it wet, and just go back and forth and turn it, scrub it, back and forth, scrub it. And when it gets all cleaned up and that, get all the things off it and get a nice even pattern, then I'm going to take brake clean and I'm going to clean it. And you're going to use several rags to clean it. You want to keep wiping it until the rag comes clean because aluminum is very porous and that stuff gets down on the pores. You also want to keep it uh, away from any of the bushing material uh, so it doesn't swell okay and uh, because the bushings will swell in here and you don't want to do that so scotch bright pad that and clean it okay so uh, we're gonna flip this over I've got all the weights installed but one um, and I'm gonna show you how I do that uh, I'm gonna back up here just a little second uh, on some of my clutch kits I've sold in the past I've sold it with this arm right here. It's an adjustable arm. It's got magnets you can put in it to adjust the weight on it. I no longer use these. They're a good arm, but I can't buy them at the good price to be able to put them in a clutch kit and make it very affordable. So as I've mentioned in the other video, uh, episode one, in 216, Skidoo came out with a 249 arm. And uh, that's what I recommend you use for the 900 and the 1200. Uh, NAs, not the turbo, but the natural aspirated. And we've ground the tip right here, okay? So you may want to go back and look at the other video and you can see what a stock tip looks like. I don't have another stock one, but these are ground, okay? I ground them myself. Um, for a stock motor, you want to be about 36 and a half grams. Uh, and be careful, go slow grinding, get a gram scale and go slow and grind them. They're hard, they take a while, but you can't add once you've taken it off. So I wouldn't go no more than 36 and a half grams, okay? Uh, one thing I would recommend it use with this clutch setup, uh, the 383 Skidoo belt's a good belt, it's a hard belt, but when you really start using it, uh, it slips. Uh, it's not consistent. So I would highly recommend uh, getting a Gates belt number 49C4266. That's C49 C4266. That's a Gates belt, and you can get that from Chris also. Okay? Now, to get back to the clutch, um, we're going to put the arm in it. You're going to have a bolt. Um, got the arm, of course. Two washers and a nut. Okay? So I usually put the bolt, get it started right here, get one of the washers on it. Put the arm in and then push the bolt through so it's just to the edge of the arm 
and get the other washer in there and then push the bolt the rest of the way through and then just snug this up. No need for Loctite. These are Nylocks and they'll stay tight. <clears throat> it's a T25 and an 8 millimeter. And I do not have the torque spec. I've been doing this for years. I was an auto tech and I built got a built-in clicker in my elbow. And the guys that have been doing this a long time know what I'm talking about. I just know what a good torque type is for certain bolts. Um, so, but if you do want it and need it, um, reach out to me at Do Talk, and I'll be more than happy to get it to you. So you just just need it snug, and it's not going to go in a place. And you want to make sure the arm is loose, okay? Now I'll leave the arms out, okay? Uh, because when you put the spring cup uh, cap on it, um, you're going to want don't want them to be in the way. Now you've got this little collar right here. That's the spring seat. It goes down in here. Now I'll show you the stock spring and the aftermarket spring we use. Here's the Dew stock spring. It's 100 PSI opening pressure and uh, 200 uh, fully compressed uh, in, uh, for the, the height. Uh, 200, so it's 100 and 200. The Goodwin spring I use is 110 and 250. So it's 10 pounds heavier on opening, 250 on the fully, op or fully closing. Um, and so the engagement, you won't notice any change in the engagement. What the spring will do is it will delay the upshift, slow it up, so that you're not overloading the motor and you're able to hold the RPMs and get a consistent pull with it. It makes a huge difference. Uh, the stock sled uh, runs at 7,200 RPM. Let me just ask my sister, recording still on? Good. Okay, runs at 7,200 RPM from the factory at 90 horse on a 216. In 219, they raised it to 95 horse. How they got that, they say an intake. Well, they actually raised the RPM a little bit too. So, um, but, but when you raise this RPM, you're gonna be in a 76 to 7,800 RPM on a stock motor. That's maximum torque, maximum horsepower. Um, that's where you wanna be. Okay, and so this spring is going to get you part way there, and it's going to raise you from 90 horsepower to 98 horsepower, and it's going to give you a much greater pull off the corner when you match it up with a secondary, which we're going to cover in episode three and four. So put the spring in there. The Goodwin part number is 420-539. That's 420-539, and it's a GPE Drive 2 spring. They'll know exactly what it is when you call them. It's on their website. Tell them I told you to call. Um, they'll take good care of you. Goodwin's a good company. I, um, uh, as I stated in the first episode, I do not have any sponsors. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I just give out information to people I deal with and are good customers. So, okay. So we had the alignment mark here. I marked it with red, but you can see the little laser mark. We got the dot on here I marked. You want to ma match them back up for, for the factory. Get this arm back out of there. I'm going to use Chris's uh, clutch compressor here. And be careful not to hit the bushings as you're letting this down. And I'll talk about the bushings when I'm putting this together. So you put that in there like that. You put, I've got this tool, but Chris has the tool for this. Okay. I modified mine for another purpose, so I made this one from for this here. So we'll put this on, compress this down. And uh, this is extra long for a purpose. It's used for many different types of clutches, and some clutches take a longer bolt than others, so instead of being short. So okay, you just want to turn this down. And be careful uh, because there is a raised portion that this has got to fit over and down. So you just want to keep an eye on it. Just go slow, don't reef it. Get it down there. And just before, okay, it's bottomed out. So I'm just going to back it off just a little so I can move it. And being able to move it, I can line the bolts up. Now, I recommend using 242 Loctite. Don't use the red Loctite. Uh, that uh, is for permanent. The blue Loctite uh, allows you to be able to remove it and that's all you need. Okay? So we're going to get these in there. 
All right, and that's all you need on it, okay? Just that bit. Get these in here. You're gonna to wanna to cross tighten them, okay? Now to go back to the bushing clearance. I re if you look at episode one, I did measure them, but I cleaned everything and I rechecked, did the measurements. And what we've got is in this piece here, the bushing, we've got uh, six thousandths clearance. And in the top bushing in the spring seat, we've got seven. Maximum is ten thousandths. So you've got plenty of wear there. New installed bushings are five thousandths. Okay, so there's only a few thousandths wear there, and ten thousandths is the maximum. There's no need to replace it. You've got plenty of of uh, uh, wear left in it but when it does get around nine especially at ten you're going to want to replace them and you have to replace this cover the bushing's not separate the bushing in here is available separate and you can press that in and out but i highly doubt that you're ever going to replace that bushing you're going to have to have a lot of wear and a lot of miles on the sled okay all right so you just snug to get these in there, get them, so you know, I don't use power tools, and the reason for it, and some of you guys have run into this, and some of you may say it's hogwash, but it's the truth, and I've seen it too many times, using impact tools to run stuff in shocks the threads, and especially on aluminum, steel, cast iron, you can get away with it, but aluminum, what will happen <clears throat> is you'll shock the thread and it'll break the thread. And then you're going to have to either drill it and tap it or put an insert in it. In the worst case scenario, you're going to have to replace the clutch part or whatever it goes into. So uh, that's why I don't use power tools on this stuff. Uh, it's just not, not a good thing to do. You can do it taking it out, but going together I would not hide I would not recommend it okay so you just snug them down in a cross pattern just like that and then I'll do the final tightening when I get the item get the compressor off here so Again, if you have any questions, the best way to get a hold of me is on dotalk.com under the 1200 forum, and there's a subsection 900 ACE. I've got a build thread there that's a 216 uh, Blizzard 900 NA that I've built that um, stock is 90 horse. I've dynoed it, done some mods, all bolt on, um, and uh, we're getting 100. And, we did 111 horse. I did some other mods after the mods, and we believe we're right in 115 horse because our data collector verified it was a gain. And so there's a lot of good information there on that build thread. So cross tight knees, just snug them down. If you want the torque, contact me and I can get you the torque for it or get an owner's manual. Uh, these things work. I've just done enough bolts over the years that I know in a certain size bolts how tight to tighten them. And a lot of old timers like me getting to be there, 64. You know, there's some things we do tighten with a torque wrench, and that is putting the clutch on the engine. All right, be careful, just lift it off. You can flip the weights back in now, arms. And you can see we've got the dot here and a the dot there, it's lined up, all right? So next thing is we're gonna do is we're gonna do the spider here. Um, and I've marked this again. It's got, got the dot. And recording's still on? Okay, good. And uh, I've measured the pucks. The pucks all measured 157 thousandths, 158 thousandths. Minimums 150 thousandths. So when you do get them down there, replace them, all right? Here's a couple things. This is a skidoo stock O-ring. 
This one actually came out pretty good. It's starting to get come apart a little bit. Usually when you take them out, they're going to be smashed. They're going to be torn apart. Okay. Kiwi, spelled K-I-W-I. -I. That's K-I-W-I. -I. They do clutches and performance work for side-by-sides. They have an O-ring. I believe it's made out of neoprene. It's a little thicker. It's definitely harder. I've run full seasons on these and they come out, they still look like brand new and they hold the clutch tight together. So I highly recommend those. You have to buy them in a 12 pack, I believe it is. Um, if not, contact me and I can sell them to you, okay? These pucks, they tap in. Um, so you're gonna wanna tap them in and then you're gonna have three that have o, the O-rings and the puck fits loose in there and they do, do that so that they can move. Okay? So, I'm gonna put that in there and here's a tip that I got off of Do Talk. I don't know who did it, but I'm using their idea. You get these spring clamps and get it to stick on there. No, oh, there we go. And what they are, just spring clamps you can get at your local hardware or whatever. And they just hold that together. If you're real good at it, which I used to do, but is you can hold it in with your hands and put the thing together. But um, let's just fit on there like that. Put your clamp on. Okay. And you do that with a third one. Just make sure the O-ring's in the groove, and then put those on. Okay, now if everything goes right, okay, set this down. We've got our dot, it's lined up. We've got our dot here, okay? We're just going to set that on there, and then where one of the clamps are, you're going to push down in, get one side, oh, got my finger on that one, get that down in there, okay, same way with the other one, must stay a part of this clamp, there it goes, in there, and then the third one, okay, so we're dot and dot, and then you just push down nice and even, okay, fits nice and tight. Now the one thing I forgot to tell you about, um, in 216, do went back to slides on these. And I highly recommend you use the slides. The 215, 214 use rollers, they're plastic rollers, and they flat spot and they don't hold up. Dalton makes a hard roller, it will destroy your arms. Um, it's a good roller, but Slides are the best way to go in this clutch, so use the slides, okay? And then what I've done, uh, and I forgot to mention it to you, you take a clean rag with some silicone spray, a uh, good quality brand, and you're going to lube these slides here and the buttons before you put it together. And I missed, uh, missed putting that together for you on that, but uh, that will, the nice thing about silicone is that it will dry and it doesn't collect dust or dirt. You don't want to use anything else, silicone. That's all you need to use on, okay? And when you first start this clutch up, after you put it on, you may hear some rattling, okay? And the reason for that is the hexes haven't set on all the arms flat. They gotta level out in there. And once they do, the rattle goes away, okay? So now you've got your other second half here with a dot on it. And then you got the dots on here, and then you're just going to slip this together, okay? Now it's not going to go totally together because of that spring seat in there isn't perfectly lined. But when you put this on the sled, and make sure you keep these together, and use your clutch holder, um, and then tighten the bolt. And I did have the bolt here, and uh, I seem to miss. Oh, it's right here in front of me. Okay. So I'm going to set this aside. So it will compress, 
and it'll push together. So, uh, and then it'll, it might pop a little bit, but that's normal. So, on the clutch here, or on the bolt here, is you've got a conical washer. It's it's got a bend to it, and you can check it by sitting on sitting on there, and then sighting underneath there to see that it's got that bow. If that bow is gone, replace the washer. Okay, it's very important because that's that holds tension on the bolt. Also, one other thing on the bolt: put a little bit of anti-seize on this. Uh, if you don't have anti-seize, just a little bit of grease. Put it on, wipe it on there, and wipe it off just so there's a thin film. Um, as I talked about it in the earlier, uh, the first episode with the pullers, uh, that's why I believe these pullers break and they gall up. It's under high load, so just a little bit of lube on there. I also torqued the clutch. I can bring the camera up now, thank you. Um, I torqued the clutch to 85 foot-pounds and not 89. The factory says 85 to 89. I do the 85 because I'm lubing it. And uh, so uh, you want to start the sled and either take it for a short cruise or rev it up on the stand. It's kind of risky doing it on the stand or lifting it up from the back from a back lift. Uh, but if that's what you got, that's what you got, but just be careful. Rev it up to about 20, 30 miles an hour, hit the brakes hard. Do it three times, uh, you know, you rev it up, let off the throttle, hit the brake, and lock it. Uh, and then shut it off and then retorque it. Uh, you'll find in a lot of times the torque stays, sometimes it moves a little bit. But um, that's going to be what you need to do for that. Also recommend with a setup that you use a Gates belt. I think I mentioned it earlier on here. And uh, if I did, I apologize, but I'll mention it again. Uh, the stock 383 belt is not very consistent when you really get horsing it, pushing it hard. Uh, it'll work good, and then all of a sudden the inconsistency goes away. Um, you may not feel it, but when you're doing testing, all of a sudden your numbers fade. And uh, so uh, the Gates belt, uh, is 49C4266. That's 49C4266. Chris sells those. It's a Gates carbon fiber. It's a little softer belt. It wears very well. It grips really well. Um, and you'll be real happy with that. So that's the, the, the deal with the primary on the E-Drive 2. If you do this, you're going to be very happy and consistent with it. Um, and then when I'm going to do the other two episodes with the secondary, uh, those combinations, uh, you'll see a big performance gain in the way the sled ride uh, runs. It really pulls hard off the corner. You're going to get four to five sled link difference in a drag race versus a bone stock one from the factory. Uh, and then uh, your mile an hour, uh, it's all dependent on conditions, mile an hour, uh, you can see about a five or six mile an hour increase. Now my sled that's modified, it has a header, it's wrapped, it has an air box that's modified inside and wrapped. It's got an ECU tune, it's got colder plugs, um, and clutched. Um, I can see on a good day 95 miles an hour on GPS. That's about 104 on the Speedo, it's 95.